Hey everybody, CVH here, and today we're on part 4 of our Return to Clockwork City set review for the Elder Scrolls Legends, and today we're going to be focusing on the agility cards in the expansion, going over their pros, cons, where I think they might see play moving forward, having only a couple days with the set so far, and just my general thoughts on them. So, let's get started. First up today is Cog Collector, a 2 Magicka 1-2 Khajiit with Pilfer at a gear to Cog Collector. Last Gasp says, summon a random neutral creature with the cost equal to the number of gears on Cog Collector. So one of the more interesting cards of the expansion, uh, a Pilfer support card first of all. So we have a 2 Magicka card with Pilfer, that could benefit Pilfer Monk. We're all kind of wondering when that deck might ever actually get competitive. It hasn't yet, at least as far as I've been playing since very, very late Close beta right before open beta. Pilfer Monk has never been a part of it, but this is another cheap option that does have Pilfer. So, available to be used alongside Master of Thieves. And a gear, essentially, is just a, a little token. So if you're playing in a real-life card game, it would just say, put a gear token on Cog Collector. Basically, it means nothing, except when you make it last gasp, uh, you get a random creature equal to however many times you've been able to Pilfer with this incredibly weak-statted creature. This is really the main downside of Cog Collector, is that it's very, very easy to kill for a 2 Magicka card. You know, Goblin Skulk, the payoff is probably a bit higher, and it's more concrete. You know what you're going to be getting a lot of the time with Goblin Skulk if you've built your deck well. This card does also have that level of variance to it, which is another downside in addition to the very weak health on Cog Collector. So, not going to live a whole lot in my opinion. Played with it a bit, and I've seen people test it in a variety of decks, but it is very fragile and RNG dependent. Worth noting that even if you never get to pilfer with this card, which might be the case a lot of the time, you'll at least get that 0-3 Dwarven Spider, or whatever other zero-cost neutral creatures uh, they release in the future. But even if you are able to pilfer once, there is a chance of getting a dud. Neutral creatures aren't necessarily known for their high value, so I'm unsure where to put this card right now. Now, could be kind of threatening and annoying in Arena, where removal is a little bit more scarce, but in Constructed, I'm just not sure that it's competing with the really powerful two-cost creatures that Agility already has, like Mournhold Trader and Goblin Skulk. Next up is Ruthless Freebooter, another 2 Magicka Khajiit, this time with 2-2 two, two of stats, we're moving on up, and Treasure Hunt Drain, plus 1, plus 1, and Drain. Also, Treasure Hunt Lethal is plus 1, plus 1, and Lethal. So Treasure Hunt again, if you haven't seen the other parts of the set review and you don't know how that mechanic works, draw each of the listed treasures to receive a one-time bonus. Treasures can only be found on your turn. So as soon as you draw a creature with Drain, uh, or an item with Drain even, or uh, with Ruthless Freebooter on the board, it will get plus one, plus one, and drain. The same with lethal. So potentially you could get both of these treasure hunt abilities off if you draw something with drain and something with lethal, maybe something with both somehow. Uh, you'll be able to get that stat buff a couple times. I don't mind this card. I think it's a cool use of the treasure hunt ability, uh, having two different options there so you can increase the chance of getting a buff. But again, I'm not totally sure that this is, like Cog Collector, going to be able to compete with the really powerful two-drop creatures we already have in the game. Uh, I'm more sold on this card again in Arena. I just don't really think that there are too many decks with enough drain and lethals to justify playing this over a very consistently good card like the Mournhold Trader for those aggressive strategies, because clearly this is a pretty aggressive card, right? I don't think you'd be playing it in too many defensive decks. Some decks that have drain and lethal include uh, Rage Archer, you could consider it there, but the two drop creatures are Fighter's Guild Recruit and Thieves Guild Recruit. There are just so many good options if you're looking for a two magic a creature that I'm just not sure the Freebooter makes the cut in anything really. Um, I'd love to change my mind on this card, I think it's fine card design, and you know, it's an average card. I, there's nothing really wrong with it, it's just when it doesn't get the bonus, it's not going to be good, and that is a potential that can happen no matter how you build your deck, so why not just play something a little more consistent. Third is Daring Heist, a 3 Magicka action in agility. Draw two cards, Daring Heist can't be played unless a creature in each lane damaged your opponent this turn. So I talked about this card in the first impressions video when it was revealed. Basically people are not stoked about it, people think this card is pretty awful, uh, they called it trashy, just one of the worst cards that had been revealed up to that point. Now there are some cards that I don't expect to see playing constructed, and this one is definitely worse than we might expect it to be. There are a lot of 3 mana or 3 Magicka cost actions or spells in a variety of games that I mentioned in the first impressions video that just say draw two cards. And we almost had that with Daring Heist, which might have been great for a ton of different decks like Control Monk, but unfortunately it has that really, really strict stipulation where you have to have attacked and or you have to have damaged your opponent with a creature in each lane uh, this turn. 
so that makes it a bit harder to use and of course you'll have to play this after you attack most of the time. So I don't disagree that this card is pretty bad and pretty unusable for the vast majority of decks but I don't want to write it off as strictly unplayable. I think this card could actually find some use uh, in a deck maybe like Swindler's Market Archer with all of those Nord Firebrands and it wants the card draw so it can keep finding some more combo pieces. Now granted I don't have a whole lot of experience with Swindler's Market combo decks so I'm not exactly sure what they need but I do think this card at least has potential in a deck like that so I don't want to say this card is completely garbage just mostly bad. Moving on, we have Murkwater Guide, a 3 magic of 4 2 goblin with treasure hunt, zero cost card. Put a copy of the treasure into your hand. So as soon as you draw a zero cost card, uh, it'll give you an additional copy of it in your hand, one time only. And we have reasonable stats on this card. It's a 3 magic of 4 2, nothing crazy, but reasonable enough. Importantly, it's a goblin. So immediately we're all thinking, I think, about the goblin archer, goblin assassin, those aggressive goblin decks. I posted a few videos of them on the channel recently. You can check them out, and one similarity that all of them share is the ability to search out Murkwater Goblins with Goblin Skulk. The zero cost zero one that gets plus two attack on your turn might seem small, but can pack a punch, especially if you get an extra copy of it in your hand. And of course, it's a very easy activator for uh, Murkwater Savage to increase its stats and obviously the big powerhouse play of the deck, Murkwater Skirmisher, buffing all the goblins. So just that little bit of extra damage on the board that you'll be getting if you're able to have a Murkwater Guide when you search for a Murkwater Goblin, which is pretty easy to do. It fits into the curve. You can play Goblin Skulk into Murkwater Guide, and then Pilfer with the Goblin Skulk, get the Murkwater Goblin, boom, additional Murkwater Goblin. Next turn, play Murkwater Skirmisher, and your opponent is essentially just going to lose. So I definitely think this is a potentially very powerful play in the Goblin decks. If they continue to see play, I expect to see this at least tested I'd be surprised if it doesn't wind up making the cut. And again, we mentioned Swindler's Market decks with Daring Heist. People have also said this could be a potential inclusion. The deck is centered around zero-cost cards, an additional Nord Firebrand, an additional Close Call, uh, something off of Smuggler's Hall maybe, could be good with Murkwater Guide in there. So I like this card in a couple different decks. I don't think this is a staple in green or anything. It clearly requires you to be playing a good amount of those zero-cost cards. But I do like the card design, and I expect this to see play. Next up, we have Back Alley Rogue, a 4 magic of 5-3 with summon, steal, cover from another creature. A 4 cost 5-3 is basically Anne's Allele Invader, with the, which is just arena playable at best, but we do have an upside here. Steal, cover from another creature. I don't think that is a bad effect. It could be incredibly useful sometimes. You know, green doesn't really have access to silence, so... This could be a workaround there if you really need to desperately attack something in the shadow lane, but... We should be able to use removal like Archer's Gambit or something like that to accomplish that purpose. Dark Elf doesn't really have any synergy with anything. While it's not a bad effect, and while these aren't absolutely terrible stats, this card just isn't really impressive to me. It just feels like an arena card. It feels like a good arena card, because stealing cover from something could be incredibly useful. You could even give this creature cover in the field lane if you wanted to for some reason to set up for a potential trade, or just not get attacked in the field lane if a guard is in the shadow lane while you're removing cover from something in the shadow lane, enabling you to attack that. Those surprises can decide an arena game. I just don't really think this card is doing too much in Constructed that other cards wouldn't be doing in whatever deck you're playing already. So I'm pretty much going to write this one off as an arena playable card. Maybe it'll surprise us, maybe not. On to the Fabricant for Agility, the 4 cost Nyx Hound Fabricant with 3-3 three, three stats, with Drain and Summon if you have a neutral card in play, Shackle an enemy creature. A lot of people were down on this card too when it was first revealed, and honestly I like this card a good bit. I've only experimented just a bit with uh, neutral centered decks using Agility, but this card has seemed powerful in them if you're going for a more aggressive or tempo-y approach. It can easily disrupt your opponent's offense, as any Shackle really can, and having Drain means this isn't something your opponent can just ignore. Ignore. You can shackle something in the shadow lane and prepare to trade and get the drain that's very powerful against an aggro deck. Both of these effects are actually very powerful in a race type of situation. If you draft enough neutral cards, I think that makes it pretty great in Arena because a lot of Arena games do come down to you trying to be aggressive and your opponent trying to be aggressive, and a card like this can really tip the scales in your favor. And it can also do that in Constructed. There are a lot of powerful threats that you just need to dodge for one turn. The Legendary in, uh, in Agility this time, what we'll be talking about in a couple cards, is a card just like that. So this card, you know, can help you bypass a threat, can also help you drain against aggro decks. I think it's well-rounded and pretty decent as long as decks that use a lot of neutrals using Agility see play. Next up is Clockwork Scorpion, the 6 magic of 3-7 with Drain and Lethal. Another Fabricant, no synergy there to speak of. Uh, 
would pro probably be best if we just talk first and foremost about how this card is not very good and constructed. This card is just not doing a whole lot that other cards aren't doing. It's not impressive. Six magic and not impacting the board in any significant way on summon is pretty bad. Uh, so, Arena. This card is great in Arena. This card is probably one of the standout Arena cards of the entire set. It's a common, it has a large amount of health, which means removal is not going to easily take care of it, and yet it doesn't feel that great to Piercing Javelin. If you have limited removal in your deck, you'd rather save that for something a bit more powerful. But this card could be incredibly powerful in its own right in Arena because it has Drain and Lethal. So with the Nixhound Fabricant, we talked about the power of Drain in Arena especially, and Lethal acts as additional removal, giving agility more options options just for cheap, or not really cheap, but more options for removal that you can see more consistently because it is a common, so you're likely to be able to see these in multiple drafts, and it's just, it's a lethal that can take some hits. You can lethal into something that's even relatively large, one of your opponent's mid-game threats, and survive in order to lethal yet again, and you're draining the entire time. So while the stats aren't too aggressive, if you're trying to make that offensive push in Arena, Clockwork Scorpion, it could just be a well-rounded, great six cost to draft in Arena. And finally, we come to the unique Legendary in Agility this time, which is Sails Through Storms. Six magic of 5-5 with Pilfer. Summon the top creature of your deck. Talked a little bit about this in the first impressions videos too. Now this is a powerful Pilfer ability. So besides the obvious synergy of using this with Master of Thieves inside Pilfer Monk, a lot of people are looking to just splashing this card in whatever deck is using agility. I've heard people discuss this as one of the top five cards of the set. I've heard people say this is potentially the most powerful card in the set, which for the record, I don't agree with. I do think a six magic card that doesn't immediately impact the board and can be stopped by a simple silence shackle or removal. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the most powerful card in the set if it also does involve some RNG, which this card essentially does because you usually can't be sure exactly what the top creature of your deck is. I'm not saying this isn't powerful though, I definitely think this card has merit in Constructed just because of the sheer swinginess of the effect if it's able to survive one turn. And a lot of people know I'm a Kinral Burglar Detractor, I don't think that card is too good because it's a 4-4 and not a 5-5. Sure it grows, but it has to live that one critical turn before it attacks usually. Sails Through Storms lives that much more and can impact the board in a really major way if it's able to pill for once. Unlike Kinral Burglar, which can still be answered by a single Silence or a single Piercing Javelin, Sails Through Storms is going to add to your board presence. So I think this card is pretty strong, and it does also have synergy in Rage Archer if you're going to be using or any sort of archer that uses Archer's Gambit or Quicksilver Crossbow, basically pinging the face. That'll count as a pilfer because if we hover over pilfer, Bonus effect when this damages the opponent. Archer's Gambit and Quicksilver Crossbow check those boxes, so you could use that to get an immediate activation on Sails Through Storms. Besides that, it could just be a solid thing to plop down there on the board, and if your opponent doesn't answer it, they might just lose. So I've already been enjoying experimenting with this card a bit. Uh, maybe in the course of the next couple weeks, we can figure out for sure which decks it goes in and which decks it doesn't, but I'm pretty certain this is one of the cards that's going to wind up seeing play from the expansion long term. But of course, these are just my opinions, so feel free to leave a comment down below what you think about any of the agility cards we've talked about today, if you like them, if you dislike them, and where you're excited to play them. If you've enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and stay subscribed for more Legends videos, including the final two parts of the set review. And feel free to go back and watch the first three if you're interested. They're up on the channel for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully you enjoyed, I'll see you next time.